We tend to remove the community from the school. They see it as government school. There are roles for government. There are roles for local governments. There are roles for community. What do you want your child to become? In what environment do you want your child to, be, to, to grow? What kind of classroom do you want? What kind of teacher do you want? To give the community the power to make decisions, every school in Nigeria should have a school-based management committee. Yusuf Buhari is a builder and is on a committee at his local school. It is important the SBMCs do not bear the financial burden of running the school, but they can play a critical role in improving the management of the school and creating the right learning environment. For Yusuf, this means giving his skills and time. The government, of course, needs to work with communities to improve learning, teaching, and schools. One of the greatest challenges for us is the number, is, is really the numbers in our schools. So we have so many children, but limited infrastructure to cope with the influx of children coming into our schools. Uh, there is total neglect of the education sector. The facilities are dilapidated, teachers are untrained. It is not possible to redress the defects of past years within a very short period. But we are assuring, on behalf of the state government, one is given this assurance that all these schools will be rehabilitated or reconstructed within a very, within the space of four or five years. Things are changing. For example, in Jigawa, the state has accessed a backlog of federal education funds available to all states, and they were the first in the country to use the 2009 funds to expand school construction. So even in terms of the infrastructure, what we are doing, as I mentioned, is that we are now, you know, continuing to build structures and then continue to employ teachers. So if we can be having, you know, more and more of this enrollment gradually, of course, we can be able to be developing our structures gradually. And definitely we have to go through, you know, establishment of more schools. In Jigawa, over 400 dilapidated schools have been repaired and new classrooms are being built to alleviate overcrowding. When I was given the school, the enrollment was 431. And now we have 5,000 plus. So you can compare, you can weigh it. The improvements in Jigawa schools have markedly improved enrollment and significantly they have contributed to a 4% increase in the number of girls attending. 11-year-old Aisha Yahaya lives in a small village in Jigawa state. Her father, Rayoluna Shafiv, is determined his daughter should get an education. <laughs> At Bembem Nomadic School, the school based management committee is working to increase enrollment. Shaura. Don't say oh come do my pani juna. Hajara Ado is a chairwoman. Yeah, he got two doors and mazo and a key hard gida in a fat a karmusu. In a chia ke bada ya ansu. Ana musulinga kafi. In a chiawa ke bada ya ansu kank ana so na zuwa makaranta. Mm and okay manya doni mutu rok ankana. Domuni mi ilimin kamu. 
Abin da yasa muke ganin amfanin sa don mu ki gaba da zaman duniya mu san abin da ake yi yi ne isa Aspin also works with traditional rulers who have a vital role in inspiring communities Our role in fact is one of our cardinal roles uh, education and in fact when we tab an any village head one of the one of the code of conducts we do have to ensure full enrollment of children in school and this is part of our duty to make sure that uh, there's total enrollment in schools so what we need more schools more teachers and better facilities people are not stupid if they know their children will be educated they will send their children to school In Lagos, the passion, drive and commitment to progress by the state government is visible in the dramatic changes in the state. From transport to trade and from waste to water, the most critical part of Lagos' transformation is education. Education holds the key. Yes. Uh, it's a gateway to all possibility. Mm. Uh, if you give a child education, you give him a legacy or give her a legacy. Yes. And with that, she can be able to weather the storm. She can be able to, I mean, move on in life. But uh, if you deny a child this access to good and qualitative Ed education, absolutely you are shutting the doors against this child. Thank you for this building. Ojidu Junior High School has benefited from the reforms in Lagos State. Atinuke Ageneyi is one of over 1,000 pupils at the school. What I love about my school is that they teach, they teach very well. And I like to be a medical doctor. I like to read and I, I love integrated science. So, and the, uh, the teacher teaching me, she's very good and she used to teach us very well. Reform also needs to be innovative. In Kano State, as many children do not attend government-run schools, the state government is working with Islamia, Quranic and Shangaya schools to integrate core subjects like maths and science into the curriculum to provide these children with a broader education. We have to consider our culture. And when you talk of culture, you have to talk of religion. The culture and the religion are mixed up together. You cannot segregate the two. They are interwoven. Education cannot take away culture. It will consolidate the culture. Truly, Western education and Islamic education will enhance our culture, will enhance our not only culture, our way of life, our way of doing things, and improve our level of development. This integrated approach is being introduced effectively in a number of northern states and is being led and supported by Islamic and traditional leaders. The first verse in the Quran is relating to read. Those are directed to him by Allah, by God's final Allah to the Prophet. Read. That's the first and most important. That's how important education is in our religion. The second verse, coincidentally, is Al-Qala, pen. So reading and the writing these are the two fundamental issues in our religion. So they, are, they should never be separated. In my residence in Kano, I have an Islamia school, and I got it integrated, both Western education and uh, Islamic education being taught together. Because that integrated approach, or lack of it, that uh, has contributed towards the North being left to behind in Western education. Magana can in the Munkara Tumboko Abune and Deke I as Sani Asamazan Allah Salah Salam Yaturas Habi one day to be J. Karanto Illumboko Day Elementar Kuma Illumina Nasana some my Mukara Kilima Adino and Deke and I be a come one day in Norman Dick Ibadu to Iora Dunia Tazamat in the Dakiga. A successful example in Kano is Timuru Kuran Jumar. 
This Islamia school also teaches school subjects like maths, science and English. Aisha Hassan teaches at the school. <laughs> Major subject ne saboda ana so yaran su ma su dan kunya ko da gaba suka yi aka dan tambaye su wani abu akai su ma su su ma a tabbatar sun kunya shi shine dalili the pupils approve of the change ina zuwa ne saboda in sami ilimin alqur'an abin da yasa nake so na zama lawa saboda na dinka fitar da gaskiyar mutane ai ina so in nemi ilimi shi isa so kuma abin da yasa ba sa so su sai su ganga gagari akan titi doctor saboda taimako the parents too have been incredibly supportive of the reform with the modern development you cannot go just with the islamic education you have to combine the two at least if you want to go further at least if you combine the two then you progress Another advantage of the integration of the curriculum is the increased number of girls receiving a broader education. In some places, you would observe a lesser number of girls in the secular schools. But the moment you go to the Islamia and Quranic schools, you see a lot more girls you know, attending. It, the integration, in fact, has really assisted us to be able to capture these girls into the mainstream of the education uh, policy of the state. Across Nigeria, it is hoped the early success of these reforms can be built on, giving more children the education they deserve. So whatever we are going to do must have such a long-term perspective of the problem. But for us, that even looks like a luxury. Because you have children to educate. Children are not going to wait for you for the 10 years or the 15 years you need to correct all this problem. You know, you need to provide education and you, are, you need to provide it now. With the support, with the financial backing, then things are beginning to turn around. It is to our advantage to send the children to school in the morning. And ultimately, the children will grow uh, into better members of the society. We are preparing them for their own future. In the next five years, I will expect a local primary school at least to have basic provisions, classrooms, furniture. Everybody wants education to work. Everybody wants it. And so we've got the right mix. And so we need to seize the opportunity of the right mix to make it happen. And I'm positive it will happen in five years. I'm positive it will happen in four years anyway. <laughs> These reforms that ESPEN is supporting are vitally important in the transformation of our schools into places of learning and growth. Schools that will give our children the fundamental skills and knowledge to lead happy and productive lives. Across our nation, we need to work together to give our children the future they deserve. Government, communities, teachers and pupils, together we can make better schools and a better Nigeria.